What's going on everybody? Welcome to the video. Here it is. We're going to go through the top 10 greatest racehorses of all time. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Please leave your comments down below. I'm sure some of these horses are going to cause uh, some controversy and some real good debate. Everyone has a top 10 list. I've seen the lists. I've watched the videos. This is my take on who I think the top 10 greatest racehorses are of all time. So let's get into it. So here we go with number 10, the only filly on this list, the Great Zenyatta. As you can see, 20 races, 19 wins, only one defeat. She came in second only by a head, and uh, what a horse Zenyatta was. Those 19 wins, by the way, were in a row. In the history of American thoroughbred horse racing, there were only three horses that won 16 or more races consecutively. The first one was the great Triple Crown winner of 1948, Citation. We'll talk about him a little later. Uh, in the 1980s, we had the great Cigar. And in 2010, Zenyatta eclipsed that, hit 19 in a row. Uh, she was an amazing horse, beautiful animal. Uh, a big girl. She was over 17 hands, just over 1,200 pounds in her prime when she was racing. Uh, Zenyatta was a closer. She would, uh, she just loved coming from behind and smashing people at the end. She was uh, everything you wanted in a racehorse. She would dance before the races. And what was really impressive about Zenyatta is what she did for horse racing, not just what she did as a thoroughbred, as a as a racer. I mean, she brought families out to the track. She brought kids out to the track, not just the diehard betters that you know are going to be there regardless. And it was really an amazing time for horse racing. And in 2010, I was living in Las Vegas, and my birthday's in the beginning of June. And one of my very few shortlist things to do for my birthday was to go watch Zenyatta run live. And I was fortunate enough to be able to get out to uh, to the LA area. I went and watched her run at the Vanity Handicap in 2010 uh, out there at Hollywood Park. And do yourself a favor, if you haven't seen it, please watch that video of her at that race. And she just breaks to the outside and the way she closed, it's the craziest crowd I've, I think I've ever been part of. And it was just an amazing day, an amazing race. And Zenyatta was just uh, incredible. And, you know, while I'm talking about Zenyatta, I have to mention, or I'm going to catch a lot of hell, I have to mention arguably the other greatest, if not the greatest filly of all time, and that's Ruffian. Um, Ruffian, we can do a whole other video on Ruffian. Long story short, she won her first 10 starts in spectacular fashion. She broke records. She was a super horse of the 70s, along with many other super horses. In my opinion, the best decade for horse racing ever. But uh, in her 11th race, she was matched up uh, in a match race against that year's Kentucky Derby winner. Ruffian broke her leg after a complicated surgery. Uh, she had to be put down that night. And uh, it was a real tragedy because she was a legit super horse. And the only reason I have Zenyatta on here is because of her body of work. It's obviously no fault to Ruffian. Uh, Zenyatta had twice the races. I have no doubt in my mind that Ruffian could have gone on to do what Zenyatta did, if not even more. Um, but Zenyatta with 19 wins in a row, you can't deny her. Uh, and for all the people that said she only ran against the gals in 2009, she stepped up at the Breeders' Cup and ran against the boys and absolutely smashed them. And that move she made at the Breeders' Cup was just, man, it's the stuff of legend. The Great Zenyatta, number 10. All right, number nine on the list, the winner of the 1943 Triple Crown, the fantastic Count Fleet. Man, what a horse this was, 21 starts, uh, he did have five non-wins. Uh, it's important to note that all those came as a two-year-old. And in addition to that, let's just remember he never finished out of the money in all of his races. And this was a horse that really loved to run. 
uh, there's all the stories of his workouts in the morning and before one of his losses, uh, it's widely documented that he ran six furlongs and 108 and a fifth. Uh, he did go out and, and take a second, I believe, at that race later that day, but uh, this horse just loved to run. Really impressive. All, all five of those non-wins came as a two-year-old when he started his three-year-old season in 1943, much like Justify uh, in 2018. He went six for six, crushed the Triple Crown, undefeated as a three-year-old, and did it in very easy and very impressive fashion. Uh, he ran the Belmont Stakes in 228 and a fifth, which at the time was a stakes record, and won by 25 lengths. And we never saw, we never thought we'd see anything like that ever again. Uh, we all know 1973 came along. We'll get to that much later. But uh, Count Fleet, what a what a hell of a horse. Uh, unfortunately, he retired uh, to stud after after his three year old season. Uh, he had a really bad ankle injury, and that prevented him from racing as a four year old. And uh, but nonetheless, still a legend. What a three year old season he had. Uh, the Great Count Fleet, number nine. All right, everybody, number eight, the incredible Dr. Fager. You know, I really struggled with where to put Dr. Fager. Uh, I've seen lists that have him as high as five or six. Um, at the end of the day, as long as he's on your top ten list, you're good to go. Dr. Fager was an incredible speed horse. His 1968 season has been referred to as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, racing seasons a horse has had. Um, much like Affirmed had Ali Dar to constantly battle, uh, no different for Dr. Fager. He had the great Damascus as his rival. Damascus, on anyone's list I know that's a, a, a real historian of the sport, Dr. Uh, Dr. Fager is usually in the top 10, and Damascus should definitely be in your top 20, top 25. Uh, fantastic horse. He had two losses to, to Damascus. But what he did in his 1968 season, breaking world records, breaking track records, uh, just a phenomenal horse. Um, I believe to this day he still holds a North American record time for one mile a race on dirt. He did that in 132 and a fifth. Um, and as far as I, I know, to this day, he's the only horse ever to win four titles in the same year. He did that in 1968. He was horse of the year, uh, co-champion turf horse, champion sprint horse, and he was the champion for older males. And very few horses have the accomplishments he does. Uh, he was a real, real fast horse. Uh, at one time called the fastest horse in the world. The great Dr. Fager coming in at number eight. All right, coming in at number seven, the spectacular, spectacular bid. What a horse this was, a real speed horse. Uh, to this day, he still holds the mile and a quarter record on dirt with a phenomenal time of 157 and four fifths. Uh, 26 races, one in 30 starts. And man, what a horse he was. Uh, he should have absolutely won the Triple Crown in, in 1979. He, the morning of the Belmont, I mean, he went out and had a great Kentucky Derby, uh, crushed the Preakness. What a time that was. And he was the massively heavy favorite going into the Belmont. That morning, he stepped on a safety pin. Uh, they did not deem him lame, so they let him run. And uh, he just broke down. It, it just wasn't him, and you could tell. Uh, he was just a different horse after that, and, and these freak things happen. Um, but never mind that, because he went on to race as a four-year-old and nine races, nine wins. Went undefeated as a four-year-old, just absolutely crushed, crushed his competition. And, you know, a lot of times we look at records and a lot of times we look at all the numbers, but something we need to look at more is what the jockeys felt. I mean, a lot of these jockeys ride dozens and dozens of horses and Bill Shoemaker is the jockey uh, very famous one of the best ever uh, to ride spectacular bit in the last half of his career and he said flat out in several interviews that spectacular bid was the best horse he ever rode let me just give you a short list of some of the horses 
that this jockey rode. He rode slops. He rode Northern Dancer. He rode Buck Passer. He rode Damascus. <laughs> he rode Forgo. He rode John Henry. I mean, Round Table. I mean, he rode some of the best horses we've ever seen. I mean, five or six of those horses are in the top 25 thoroughbreds of all time. And he says flat out, Spectacular Bid was the best horse he ever rode. So coming in at number seven, very deserving, the great Spectacular Bid. All right, moving down the list to number six, the amazing Seattle Slough. Seattle Slew, the winner of the 1977 Triple Crown, the first horse ever to do that as an undefeated racer. And wow, it was just Seattle Slew mania. Uh, we didn't know what we would see after Secretariat's incredible 1973 Triple Crown. And just four years later, here came this super unlikely uh, racehorse in Seattle Slough. His story is absolutely incredible from his owners to the trainers to uh, it's just it's just an incredible story and uh, Seattle Slough was as legit as you get. Uh, he could be a little higher on this list. He could be a little lower. Again, this is all open to interpretation but Seattle Slough, the first horse to be undefeated to win the Triple Crown and let's talk about some of his accomplishments. I mean, not only was he an absolute beast and was he an absolute uh, just unbelievable runner, he made the Triple Crown look so easy. And he did not have it easy in the Kentucky Derby. What he did there was incredible. And then he just showed everyone in the Preakness and the Belmont that he was absolutely the boss. He was as nice a horse as he was when he was on that racetrack. He was a bully. He was a savage. And he let you know flat out, I'm the big boy. I'm the best out here. Do what you want, but you will not win. And let's talk about a couple of other great horses. Now, if this was a top 15 list, I'm pretty confident that both Affirmed, the 1978 Triple Crown winner, and Forgo, uh, one of the best horses we've ever seen would be on this. Again, if that was if this was a top 15 list, I think you would have to have Forgo and Affirmed on that list. Well, he beat both of them, and he beat both of them prime. In 1978, uh, the Marlboro Cup, he beat both Affirmed and Forgo in that race, and he raced Affirm a second time and crushed him, and Affirmed was a hell of a horse. So... Seattle Slough is just, uh, he's one of those legendary horses, and you can't forget about, as much and as impressive as he was on the track, you can't forget about what he did when he retired and went off to stud. I mean, there are so many horses today, amazing horses running on tracks all over the country and all over the world for that matter, that have that bloodline, that Seattle Slough blood running through them. And there's a very good chance uh, a Triple Crown winner someday will come out of uh, what Seattle Slew did. So coming in at number six, the very impressive, the legendary Seattle Slew. All right, guys, number five. Here we go with the Grey Ghost himself, Native Dancer. Wow, was Native Dancer a really, really amazing horse. Uh, just as TV was really coming into the to the main scene, uh, so was Native Dancer. They kind of both came together at the right time, and uh, he really should have been a, a Triple Crown winner. It's frustrating, uh, along with Spectacular Bid, uh, it's frustrating that these amazing horses fell just short, uh, but that's horse racing. So in uh, 1953, he was... It's frustrating to talk about because he was such a great horse. 21 starts, uh, 20 wins. The only loss of his career is a very close second place loss um, in the Kentucky Derby of his three-year-old season. And he got, of course, like Man of War's only loss. It's certainly controversial. He got bumped really bad on the first turn. He was actually bumped twice that race. And the amount of ground that he had to make up was just unbelievable. Um, he actually lost to a horse called Dark Star.
that he had beat a, as a two-year-old and was clearly the better horse. But uh, Dark Star beat him by, uh, by about a head. And uh, it was really unfortunate because Native Dancer was as close to perfect a horse as you're going to find. Uh, much like, Z- like Zinziata, he liked to come up from behind and, and close really hard. Uh, just an amazing runner. Uh, the stories of him and his times and training were, uh, were just phenomenal. He won Horse of the Year in both 1952 and 1954. Uh, probably could have won Horse of the Year in 1953, but because he lost the Derby and because Tom Fool uh, was undefeated that year uh, with all 10 of his starts, uh, he won Horse of the Year and Native Dancer came up second in the voting. But uh, all around, just an incredible horse. I have him at number five and... Uh, really one of those horses who when you're talking about the best of all time uh, as we're about to get to there's a few names that always come up but Native Dancer uh, no matter what your list is your top 10 list Native Dancer has to be on it whether he's number five number eight number 10 number four uh, Native Dancer definitely needs to be on your list and what he did at stud also was uh, was fantastic so there you have it, number five, the amazing Grey Ghost Native Dancer. So here we are at number four, and it's none other than the great Kelso. Man, I love this horse. Uh, first and foremost, he is the only horse in thoroughbred horse racing history to win Horse of the Year five times. Uh, no other horse in history has won it more than three. Um, Kelso is, I mean, God, what do you say about this guy? Out of all the things he's done, and I'm going to run down some of his stats because it's so impressive, but one of the things he did is he carried a lot of weight. Um, he carried more, 130 pounds or more, on 24 races, and he won 13 of them. I think he was in the money uh, or second, another five or six and uh, I mean, just an absolutely amazing horse. Um, again, he set American records. He set world records. I mean, he set an American record for a mile and a half on the turf at 223.4. I mean, that is flying. Um, he still holds the world record for uh, two miles on dirt, uh, 319.1. He did that at the 1964 Jockey Club Gold Cup. Uh, he's just, uh, an amazing horse. I mean, he won the standing stymie handicap at age five and that was in 1962 and he won it when he was an eight year old in 1965. Let me say that again. He won it as an eight year old. I mean, this horse was just, uh, unbelievable set nine track records, carried a tremendous amount of weight. He didn't care. He was a big horse. He was a bully and, uh, man, was he amazing. Uh, again, I wasn't around when he was racing, but uh, just to go back and watch the, the tape and, and to get, uh, I've had the opportunity to talk to a few of other uh, big horse racing historians that saw him run and said he's just, uh, he's just one of the best to ever do it. So coming in at number four, the great Kelso. All right, everybody, here we go. We're at the top three, and coming in at number three is the amazing Citation. I am such a big Citation fan. This horse, there's just, there's probably not enough video time to talk about how amazing he was. Uh, the 1948 Triple Crown winner, uh, he was the first horse ever to earn a million dollars. We'll get into that in a minute. His owners were very greedy and, and raced and ran him way too long. Uh, we talked earlier when we mentioned Zenyatta being the only third horse ever to get 16 consecutive victories in a row in a major stakes race. Uh, the first to ever do that was Citation. Uh, this horse was just as, as amazing as a horse can be, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> man, where, where, to, where to even start? Uh, what he did as a two-year-old, I mean, he raced his third start ever here at Arlington outside of Chicago and broke the track record uh, in his third start ever, broke the track record over five furlongs. Uh, what he did as a three-year-old will go down in many racing historians' opinions and certainly in mine as the greatest 
three-year-old season of any racehorse. He ended up as a three-year-old that year with 20 starts and 19 wins. Uh, just absolutely incredible. Crushed the Triple Crown. Um, and we mentioned earlier that he was the first horse ever to earn a million dollars. His owners were, were very, very greedy, and it's unfortunate that he raced as long as he did. Although, if you look at his record, I mean, 45 starts, 32 wins, 10 seconds, and two third places. That's 44 money finishes out of 45 races. It's absolutely incredible. And if you consider that after his, at the end of his three-year-old season, he had 29 starts, 27 wins, and two seconds. I mean, that's incredible. And he should have been retired. Uh, after his third year, old, three-year-old season was done, he had developed oscillate. Uh, it's arthritis in the fetlock joint, usually in the front two legs. And uh, he had to sit out his entire four-year-old season. Then they brought him back into racing. He still went on to do phenomenal things broke track records, tied track records, set world records. I mean, Citation was just as incredible a horse as you're going to find. And his jockey, uh, Eddie Acaro, who is the only jockey in history to win two Triple Crowns, he did it on World Away, and uh, he also did it, obviously, on Citation. And let me just read off some of the horses that Eddie rode. Uh, obviously, World Away, as we just mentioned, he rode the great Kelso, who we just talked about, who was number four. He rode Nashua. He rode Bold Ruler, the uh, father of Secretariat. He rode in some warm-ups. He rode the great Native Dancer, uh, Ponder, Hoop Jr., some real um, sword dancer, some really amazing horses. And he said, by far and away, not even close, Citation's the best horse he ever rode. Uh, that says a lot from one of the legends of, uh, of the jockey world. And you just can't say enough about the great citation. I actually struggled to put him at number two. And I know that would drive some of you nuts. But he was that good. I mean, 19 wins for 20 starts as a three-year-old. And he crushed the triple crown. Uh, there's a lot of room to argue that he could be the number two best horse of all time. But number three, the incredible Citation. All right, so this brings us to the number two horse, and that is the great Man o' War. I know we've already got controversy. Yes, Man o' War is number two on my list. He was an incredible, incredible horse, legendary. Uh, came around very early in the 1900s. Uh, he did not race in the 1920 Kentucky Derby, although we can all confidently say he would have certainly been the favorite. Uh, his owners didn't feel he should run that far uh, in that first race of the Triple Crown, so he did race in the 1920 Preakness and Belmont, uh, clearly won those races. Um, overall, he had 21 races and 20 wins. He should have been perfect at 21 wins. Uh, but he did have one very close loss to a horse named Upset. That is actually where the, uh, the term was coined, uh, an upset in, in sports. And, uh, but uh, he, he started that race from behind. At that point, they had not established the traditional starting gates that we have now. So the horses would, almost like in a match race, essentially just line up and then go. And when the race started, Man of War was actually facing the other direction. By the time he turned around and got going, he was already a good uh, f three to four lengths, they estimate, behind, and uh, just ended up losing, again, to that horse called Upset by a nose, and uh, he had actually beat him two weeks prior. So uh, pretty, pretty, pretty sure we can say, much like Native Dancer should have been uh, undefeated. He got, obviously we talked about earlier, got bumped twice badly in that race. Man of War certainly should have been undefeated as well. He was as close to perfect a horse as you can find. And where he left off on the racetrack, he picked right up in stud. Uh, his bloodline can be traced to some of the greatest horses of all time. Uh, obviously, War Admiral followed him. War Admiral won the Triple Crown, another amazing horse. 
War Admiral actually gets uh, the, kind of the, the villain role. If you saw the movie Sea Biscuit, Sea Biscuit beat him in the in that match race. But overall, um, much like I think Pacquiao is a better boxer than Mayweather, even though he lost. Uh, even though War Admiral did lose that match race to Sea Biscuit, I still think War Admiral was overall the better horse. Uh, but nonetheless, Man of War is as close to perfect a horse as we'll ever find. He was big, just a big chestnut. Uh, big Red was actually one of his nicknames. And just a legendary, legendary horse. The great Man of War coming in at number two. All right, so here we are at the number one, the GOAT, the greatest of all time. It is none other than Secretariat. This horse was literally as close to perfect as you can get. And I know there's already controversy with this list. It started with Zenyatta at number 10. I know a lot of people have Man of War as number one on their list. And to all of you that love Man of War, I'm sorry. You're just wrong. Secretariat is the greatest race horse of all time. These horses race, and the numbers do not lie. Now, let's talk about the numbers, because when it comes to the numbers, this is where a lot of the controversy and confusion lies. So you have Man of War, who only lost one race, uh, and I get that. So because Man of War won 95% of his races, compared to Secretariat, who won 76% of his races, there's that controversy. Well, let me erase that controversy right now. All I have to say is the 19, I don't even have to say the 1973 Triple Crown. I will just say the 1973 Belmont. The argument's over with. What Secretariat did at the 1973 Belmont. He won by 31 links, and he set a track record of 224 flat, which I promise you will not be broken. It will not be broken. No one's come within two seconds of it. And that was in 1973. It's July of 2020. I promise you, the numbers do not lie. There's not a single horse in the history of horse racing that could have beat Secretariat on that day. But let's rewind a little bit. The 1973 Triple Crown starts with the Kentucky Derby. Secretariat, who did not have the best start and started out last, ends up running the first sub two-minute Kentucky Derby in history. He ran a 159, just over a 159, and beat Sham, who was an incredible horse in his own right. Then the Preakness. Now, what's the most, the most amazing thing about Secretariat's running was what he did, for me at least, what he did at the Preakness. Everything gets overshadowed by the monstrosity of awesomeness that happened at the Belmont. 31 links, running a 224, the way he just, I mean, a tremendous machine. I mean, everything about that day was just magical. It is single-handedly the greatest performance in the history of horse racing. Horses are not supposed to run that fast. What he did defies logic. It defies gravity. Uh, he was Pegasus that day. And but, but what really impressed me, and, and again, I wasn't even alive when Secretariat was racing, but what impresses me is what he did at the Preakness. He started out dead last again, and that move that he made on the first turn where literally over about 200 yards he went from last to first was absolutely, for every other horse, probably a deal breaker and a disaster. But he was just, he was just a whole nother level. Uh, uh, from everyone else. I know Man of War was an amazing horse. Citation was an amazing horse. Everyone has their favorite. But at the end of the day, the numbers do not lie. Secretariat was the fastest horse that ever lived. I don't possibly see that Belmont record of 31 links and 224 flat ever being broken. He was as just... Again, just as perfect a horse as possible, and absolutely, 1,000%, if he is not the number one thoroughbred on your list, 
with all due respect, your list is wrong. Man of War was great. Citation was great. Lots and lots of great raid horses. Citation was not the best. Man of War was not the best. Secretariat is the greatest of all time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it, it comes out that I, I have a real passion for, for horse racing. And for all of you that, that do as well, I hope you leave your comments below. I would love the, the dialogue and I'd love to know what your list is. Uh, and again, some of these can go differently. Um, you know, I'm going to do a whole other video because this was pretty lengthy. Most of the top 10 racehorse videos you see online are very quick with a little background music. I wanted to give some context and some actual information so people can walk away a little more knowledgeable about these amazing thoroughbreds. Uh, I'm going to do a follow-up video with some honorable mentions. Some of those horses already got mentioned like Ruffian and Affirmed, but there's some definite uh, honorable mentions that we need to talk about. And then I'm going to do another video on the 1970s, which I believe is the greatest decade in horse racing history. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you guys soon. Thank you so much.